Hi everybody, William Junior Chef here, and today I'm cooking the chicken marsala box. And I chose this recipe because I thought about, you know, chicken marsala and how delicious it is, and how it's a timeless recipe. But I also thought about the parts of chicken marsala that I didn't like, how the chicken got squishy and dry and, and all this other bad stuff. So I thought, you know, I should really elevate this dish and make it a lot better. So that's what I'm doing today, and I'm going to show you all the little tricks and tips that I do to make my chicken marsala mm, even better. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be dealing with our chicken first. So I have two boneless skinless chicken thighs here. Here they are, chicken thighs. I know, beautiful. Now I'm going to take them, I'm going to put them right onto my um, clean film here. My and then I'm going to take my other piece of clean film and I'm going to put it right over the top of them. Boom. Now I'm doing this because I want to be extra careful about cross-contamination and stuff like that. Chicken is a very dangerous protein. You've got to worry about salmonella, getting people sick, which is something that you definitely want to avoid whenever you're cooking. So the next step is to take your meat pounder, which I happen to use my rolling pin. I use this to beat up thugs. <laughs> anyway. So what you want to do is you want to take it and you want to pound out your chicken really nice and thin so um, that it'll cook more evenly and also so that it'll be, you know, just tastier. So, here we go. I think that's about good. So now we're going to take this and we're actually going to be making our breading. Now most people would dredge um, a chicken whenever they go to fry it, which is when they take the the, uh, the flour mixture and they put in an egg mixture and they put in a breadcrumb mixture and then they fry it. Well, I don't really like that. I just think it's too much work, it's too messy, it's too yucky, and I think that it really, uh, it's, just, it's just gooey in the mouth, it's bad. I don't, I don't enjoy it. So, I'm going to show you how I like my fried chicken. So we're going to take here, <laughs> it's our seasoned Italian breadcrumbs. Um, just put them right in there. I'm going to take our Parmesan cheese here. We're going to take a pinch of salt. So I just want to season it just a little bit. A little bit of salt. And finally, a little bit of pepper. There we go, that's just about good. So then you're going to want to toss this together. There we go. Do a nice little shape, there's our mixture. All right, so now we're going to take off our cling film here. Boom. And now you're going to take your tongs and take your nice evenly pounded chicken and just press it right in. This is when you might want to, you know, get involved with your hands. And then you really want to press it in there because if you don't press it really in there, I'm, not, I'm actually going to get in there with my hands. If you don't press it in there just right, um, breadcrumbs won't stick. So this is kind of like a cross between a milanese uh, chicken um, and chia piccata kind of uh, breaded chicken and kind of a cracker breading. This is just how I prefer it. This is how my mom makes it for me. And uh, this is just, you know, how I like it. So there we go. That's kind of what you want it to look like. Nicely breaded, really pretty. And then I'll get the other one breaded once I drop it into the oil. Now when you're doing the oil, one of the things that I have here is I have my one spoon. And what you want to do is you want to tap your one spoon into the oil and see if it bubbles and I'll tell you if it's ready to fry. Now I have it on a little bit of a cool setting, so it's not really bubbling too much, so it's not quite ready to fry. So that's a, a special trick because it takes the water out of the wood in a spoon and uh, cooks it out. So kind of see, not there yet, not hot enough. So I'm gonna give that a minute. I'm gonna take this guy 
I'm going to fold over our cling film, set it right there. And we're going to do the same with the other chicken thigh. You really got to press in there. You really, you really, really have to, you know, really push it in. Otherwise, the breadcrumbs will fall off when you're cooking, and uh, that'd be very bad. Then you won't get a uh, really nice crispy fried chicken. Pretty good. Pretty good. So I'm gonna give a minute for my oil to heat up, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. So our oil should be just about hot enough. I'm gonna to give the bubble test. Oh, look at those bubbles! Wow, that looks perfect. You can see all the bubbles around the wooden spoon. That means that our oil is hot enough, and it's time to drop our chicken. Now, one of the things about this chicken is you might be saying, Logan, Logan, there's no way that this chicken is going to be breaded nicely. There's no way this is going to work. Just trust me, have some faith, cook the recipe, and it'll come out amazing. So one of the things that you want to do whenever you're frying anything is you want to lay it away from you. And you want to lay it in nice and gently. You don't want to drop it too hard. You just want to lay it in there really nice. If you drop it really hard, then the oil will have a larger chance of splattering all over the place getting messy and um, you could get injured by the oil. So you want to make sure that you always lay it in away from you. That way any splattering is going that way. Just pro tip. So just want to cook it for a little bit. You want to give it a little smell. That's another thing. You want to smell those Italian flavors coming through in those breadcrumbs. You want to smell that cheese caramelizing up. You want to just smell, mmm, Italy. I've never been to Italy, but this is how I think it would smell. <laughs> so we're just going to want to move it. Wait a couple of minutes. You want it to get nice brown crispy. One of the things about cooking chicken is you always want to, you know, if you have a question about if it's done, um, some people cut into it. I've seen that done. Um, you could also go a little bit over. I like to be very careful with chicken because um, it does have a very dangerous tendency, and I don't want to get anyone sick, especially myself, or any of my loved ones, or anyone that I'm going to be serving this dish to. So you always want to remain very vigilant, very careful, and very safety-minded whenever you're cooking chicken. So I'm actually going to give it a little bit of a flip here. I'm going to make sure that it's nicely browned. You can see, it's looking really nice, staying a little crispy. Now, one of the things is that I'm not really deep frying it. I'm just kind of uh, pan frying it here in a nice amount of oil. Um, you want to make sure that you still have one side that isn't covered. Um, that's the way that when you flip it, the other side gets brown and that you don't have two brown sides. That would be bad. So we're just going to give it a minute. It's going to let it cook up, and uh, we'll be back. All right, welcome back. So our chicken is done cooking. I'm going to pull it out, just give it a nice little strain. And right onto a plate. Mm. Look at those two beautiful pieces of chicken. They're nice and thin, really crispy, gonna be super delicious, nice and crunchy. And that's one of the reasons why I chose to do this whole separate cooking of the chicken, is because I wanted it to have a textural crunch to it that classic chicken marsala is lacking. So, there they are, they're done, and now we can move on to cooking the sauce. All right guys, so now that we have our chicken finished, we're gonna take some of our pasta here. This is our curly spaghetti. I'm gonna take um, just about this much. I'm gonna hand it off to the pasta cookers over there off camera, and it's gonna be cooked over there. You can see that it's got this curly, curly, just beautiful shape to it. Now I picked this pasta because of its bounciness and it has a lot of lift which is something that I really want in this dish because I'm going to be putting my chicken on the top and I'm going to have my sauce. And I want to have the chicken elevated so that it doesn't get you know mushy from the sauce so that's why I have such a bouncy pasta. Also I mean it's just gorgeous I and mean, just look at this. Anyway go ahead and hand this off I'll catch you guys then. Alright guys welcome back so now it's time to make our Marcella sauce. 
So first step is to get our pan nice and hot. So we've got that started. Now, the first step after that is we have to break down and dice our shallot and garlic. So I'm gonna start with the garlic here. You wanna make sure that you take the knife, smush, boom, you hear that crack. That's what you're looking for. Then you're gonna to wanna to peel your garlic. And boom. Get it all nice and peeled. There we go, one nice peeled clove of garlic. Now we're just gonna take our knife, right? Just give it some nice slicing. Nice slices. Now, um, I'm just gonna go back over those slices just with a nice little rock dice. Once again, going for that rustic Italian knife work. Just gonna give it a couple more slices. Boom, looking good. Now we're going to add our olive oil to our pan here and we're gonna get that so that's nice hot pretty soon. So there we go, it's going, it's working great. Next we're gonna break down our shallot. Uh, because our shallot is a little bit large, we're only gonna be using half of it today. So you're gonna to wanna to go right down the center, boom. Now we can put this other half of shallot away for later and then we're gonna to wanna to peel it. Once again, you just wanna take your uh, them here, get it, boom, give it a nice peel. Oh, look at that beautiful purple shallot color. This is going to be so delicious. So then once again, we can spill that over there. Clear this off a little bit. Then we're going to want to give this a nice little dice. Boom. Now our oil is ready. So we're just going to add this straight to our oil. Nice. Gonna turn our oil down a little bit. Gonna add just a little bit more shallot. Once again, you can do the shallot and garlic to taste. Um, I'm not a big onion fan, so I go a little light on the shallot, but um, once again, just gonna wanna add it in. Give it a nice little swirl around. Some stragglers. Boom, looking great. Mmm, you smell it, you can see our garlic's toasting up really nice. Our oil was a little bit hotter than I wanted, but that's okay. Just gonna give our pan a little bit of air time. Now it's time to um, deal with our mushrooms, which we are going to want to um, slice. So. Okay. Oh my God, a little bit too hot. So we're gonna take it off the heat all the way, and then we're gonna finish our prep work. Just gonna take our sliced mushrooms, mushroom slices, gonna toss them right in there. Now we're gonna be slicing four whole mushrooms here. Now I'm using uh, these delicious baby bellows. Uh, they just have an amazing flavor. I like the flavor of these a lot more than shiitakes. Other types of mushrooms, which I think can taste a little bit dirty, but these always have just a beautiful flavor to them. So once again, just wanna get some nice slices. Here we go. We're just gonna toss those in there. And two more mushrooms to go. So once again, you're gonna wanna start on the one side, get a nice little sliver, another slice, another slice. And then get that classic mushroom shaped, shaped slice. A little bit of a tongue twister there. Try saying that 10 times fast. <laughs> Here we go. Just gonna take those, toss them in, turn back on our heat to let's see if I can work it. Just a small level. Toss in our mushrooms and then we can dice up our final mushroom here. Just slice it up. give this a little bit of a stir. But we do want our mushrooms to caramelize up a bit. So, because I did have some issues with the temperature of my oil being too hot, uh, we do want to make sure that our mushrooms 
do get a little bit of caramelizing action. Um, once again with this, you want to make sure that you don't burn your oil or your garlic or your shallot. Olive oil does have a lower smoke point um, than other oils, so keep that in mind if you're used to using you know, peanut, canola, vegetable, grapeseed, avocado oil. Any of those oils will have uh, pretty much a higher smoke point than an olive oil, which is something that you have to keep in mind when you're cooking. That's something that I uh, didn't really keep in mind too well. <laughs> So you can see our mushrooms are getting seared up really nicely, looking really pretty. Have some of those classic mushroom shapes, the mushroom tea. Mushrooms are really delicious. I love the flavor of mushrooms. I think they're just tasty. Of course, if you don't like mushrooms, you can go a little bit lighter on the mushrooms. Once again, it's all about making a delicious dish for you and your guests and whoever else is enjoying this with you. So, there we go. I think that looks about good. I'm going to add in our pros first of our volants there. And then we're gonna add in our flour. Now I'm adding the flour in right now because I want the flour to really mix well with the oil. And I wanna cook it. Because raw flour tastes terrible. So I wanna avoid that flavor by cooking it in this oil with the herbs and the mushrooms. And I'm cooking it now, kind of making a little bit of a mini roux, not really, uh, just sort of, kind of. Let me give it a little bit more. There we go, it's looking all right. Good. Next I'm going to be adding in my chicken stock. So with the chicken stock I'm adding this in mainly because if we were cooking this in a traditional way, the chicken marsala, we'd be cooking the chicken in this broth. But the thing is, is we're not cooking the chicken in our sauce. So the sauce is naturally going to be lacking that chickeny flavor, which I'm going to be supplementing with this really nice chicken stock. Next, we're going to add in our one cup of Marsala wine. Just right in there. Mm. That's what gives the chicken Marsala that, you know, chicken Marsala. I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of salt. A little bit more salt. And could be hitting it with a little bit of pepper. Right about now. Well, that should be good. And with this, you just want to give it a nice little stir. Get it going nicely. And this is one of those times where you really gotta cook it up and uh, just let it, you know, cook out, thicken up, and get to the right consistency before we add our cream and our cheese. So, I'm just gonna give it a minute uh, to cook up and uh, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so welcome back. Here we have our uh, Marsala sauce, which has thickened up really nicely. It's almost time to add our heavy cream here. So I'm just gonna pour this in really nice. There we go, there's our heavy cream. And then I'm also going to be adding in our Parmesan cheese right away. So there we go. Then you just wanna give this a nice stir and really make sure that it's all nicely mixed. And then you just want to cook it down a little bit more to make sure that the flavor is married properly. Um, you just see that creaminess. You want it to get a little bit thicker. Once again, with this sauce, you can cook it down to your desired thickness. I like it a little thick. And also, you might have noticed here that I have my other components here to assemble my dish. I've got my pasta, which is done, cooked perfectly al dente. Now, we do have our pasta cooked al dente because we are going to be tossing it in the sauce first onto the plate. So, you want to make sure that it's just got that little bit of toothsomeness that is so Italian. Oh, lovely. I also have my chicken right there, which is ready to be plated up. So we're just waiting on our sauce. We're just going to give it some time to thicken up and cook down, and then we can plate. All right, guys. So welcome back. You can see our sauce is beautifully thick. I'm actually going to get out my metal spoon. And one of the tests for the sauce is you want it to make sure that it coats the back of the spoon. You can see beautiful coating. Mm. You can see it holds a nice shape on the spoon. That tells me that it is done and ready to be served. So, we're just going to give this a little bit of a stir. We're going to take our pasta here and just going to grab it, toss it right in. Boom. 
we're gonna get a little bit of a stir. And then we're gonna like take our tongs and really make sure that you get this pasta nice and soft. So really get it in there. Boom. You're beautiful. Now you're just gonna take it. Nice pick up and onto the plate. Just let it be natural. You know, this is a very natural, very rustic, classic Italian dish, just with a couple of new spins. So, oh, look at that. Oh, that look great. So now just last little bit of noodles. Then we're going to grab some of our mushrooms. Now, if you are scared of mushrooms and, uh, you know, you're not a fan, this is a great mushroom dish to, to try because the mushrooms really blend a great flavor with the Marsala wine. It just tastes phenomenal. So we're just going to give that a little bit. Stir. And we're going to take our chicken right here. Piece number one right on top. And we're going to put piece number two right on top of that. Oh, beautiful. Now we're going to take this off the heat. Done. And I'm going to grab that spoon that I had earlier because you do want to spoon some of the sauce on. So I'm just going to spoon the sauce right onto the pasta a little bit. I do happen to love this sauce a lot. So um, I like a little bit of extra sauce. So just grabbing a little bit more of the sauce. Boom. Looking great. So now we're going to garnish it with a little bit of our Parmesan. And a little bit more Parmesan. And then we're also going to hit with a little bit of diced parsley. So I just want to take the parsley just really quickly. Just want to get it up to garnish. And just dice it up really nice. Nice and fine. Boom. There we go. Just get a little bit of your Italian parsley right on the top. Boom. And there you have it. Chicken Marsala made the Logan way with my favorite style of fried chicken. This is really beautiful marsala sauce and a lot of different textures. You know, you've got the al dente pasta, you've got the nice squishy cooked down mushrooms that are just, ah, oh, and they've given their flavor to the sauce. You've got the springy pasta and you've got the crunchy chicken. So you've got a lot of textures going on and you've got a lot of flavors too, but they're all nice and Italian and blend together beautifully. So I hope that you enjoyed this dish. I hope that you enjoyed this Mad Apron box and I hope to see you again. Bye.